Hi, I'm Sepida, and I'm going to tell you about non-adaptive adaptive sampling on turnstile streams. This is a joint work with Ilya Rosenstein, David Woodruff, and Samsung too. So what is adaptive sampling? Adaptive sampling is an algorithmic paradigm for solving many data summarization tasks. In short, we are given a set of n vectors in a d-dimensional Euclidean space. Adaptive sampling at every iteration samples one vector with probability proportional to its norm or squared norm. And then it does it in an adaptive fashion, meaning that after it samples the first vector, it projects away all the remaining vector. It projects them basically onto the subspace uh, that is orthogonal to what it has already picked and then continues on the residuals. So pictorially, suppose that we have these five points, then maybe in the first iteration, it samples the point that has the maximum norm, and then it projects all the points onto this subspace that is orthogonal to the first vector, and then uh, continues with the projected points. And then maybe in the second round, we sample uh, this vector, uh, and uh, again, we project all the points onto the subspace spanned by the uh, second um, vector. And then it continues this process for k uh, iterations until it gets its k points. So um, adaptive sampling is used for many data summarization tasks. So uh, let's, uh, in order to uh, define them, let's define a framework first. So suppose in this framework, we are given a matrix A that is n by d. So the n rows of the matrix corresponds to n objects in the data set. So basically, each row could, uh, could be for example, a feature vector of an object in a large data set. And now given a small parameter k, the goal is to uh, find a small representation of this data, uh, and by small I mean of size k, such that it optimizes some predefined functions. So many of these tasks uh, fit into this uh, framework. For example, um, the row subset select in the row subset selection problem, we would like to pick k rows of the matrix such that the total error is minimized. So it's some, in somehow in some, some sense it uh, best approximates the data. And by error, I mean the total sum of uh, the distance squared of all the remaining rows to the subspace spanned by the rows that we have picked. In the subspace approximation, we would like to find a subspace of dimension k that best approximates the data that is minimizes the total squared distances of all rows to this subspace. In the projective clustering, we would like to approximate uh, the, data, the set of rows with s uh, subspaces, each being of dimension k. And, I, k. and finally, for uh, the volume maximization problem, we would like to pick a subset of rows of size k that maximizes the volume. And the reason why we care about the volume is that because it's, um, uh, it's one way to capture the notion of a diversity. So the more diverse the points are, the more volume they have. And uh, basically, now the goal is to pick a small subset of the data so, uh, such that they, uh, their, uh, the diversity of the data is still maximized or so in some sense preserved. And adaptive sampling has been used to derive approximation algorithms for all of these tasks. So let me define formally what adaptive sampling does. So in the first iteration, adaptive sampling samples every row with probability proportional to its squared norm. Basically, AI is sampled with probability, the squared uh, norm of uh, uh, the row AI over the Frobenius norm of A. So where the Frobenius norm is just the square root of all um, entries the squared in the matrix. And then it does it in an adaptive fashion. So for the subsequent round, we, uh, rounds, we need to project away from what we already sampled. To do that, let's um, uh, put the set of rows that we have already sampled as uh, the rows of the of a matrix M, and then projecting away from what we have sampled is just equivalent to multiplying our uh, matrix A, or equivalently its rows, uh, by this uh, projection matrix I minus M plus M, where M is the pseudo inverse, M plus is just the pseudo inverse of M. And now for k iteration, we would like to sample uh, mat uh, sample rows of the matrix A with probability proportional to the uh, squared norm of AI times this projection matrix I minus M plus M. Okay. So, and, and once we sample one row, we append it to the set of uh, sampled vectors uh, M. So now this process seems inherently sequential because we are sampling one row, then we're projecting away from it, we sample another one and then continue. So in this work, we would like to see whether it's possible to implement adaptive sampling in a non-adaptive fashion, basically. Is it possible to, uh, to implement adaptive sampling in one passive streaming? 
And uh, let's uh, then uh, recap what streaming algorithms are. So um, streaming algorithms are one model to handle large amounts of data. And in particular, they correspond to the case where we don't have sufficient um, storage to uh, sufficient memory to store all the input in the data and processes. So we, the data is stored somewhere else, maybe on a disk. And, this can we only have sequence we can only only make sequential passes over the data and we would like to solve our problem on the fly meaning that we would like to solve uh, we would like to use a small or sublinear amount of storage and solve our problem while making only one or few number of passes over the data and the parameters we care about here are space number of passes and approximation so for this problem our input is a matrix a and therefore we can con uh, consider two streaming models for our problem. Either the rows of matrix A are arriving one by one, so this corresponds to the row arrival model, or we are in the Ternstein model, where we receive, we start with a matrix that is, all, that is all zeros, and then we receive updates to the entries of the matrix. Each update is of the form i, j, delta, meaning that add the value of date delta uh, to the i and j uh, entry of the matrix. And delta could be positive or negative. So for the purpose of the talk, I'm going to focus on the row arrival model uh, in the algorithms that I described, but um, I will make it clear which results hold uh, for the streaming, for, uh, for the turnstile uh, setting, and which results only hold in the row arrival model. So um, now more precisely, we would like to simulate K rounds of adaptive sampling in one pass of streaming. And uh, I should also mention that uh, even uh, some of the initial results on these data summarization tasks considered uh, these problems in the streaming setting. So in a nutshell, we show that yes, it's possible to simulate adaptive sampling in one pass of turnstile stream. Okay, so let's see how. First, we show uh, an algorithm for LPN2 sampler. So what does it mean? Uh, suppose that uh, we have a matrix A that is arriving uh, in a streaming fashion. And after the stream finishes, we are given this post-processing matrix P. And what is our goal? Our goal is to sample the rows of matrix AP with probability proportional to their uh, squared norm. Okay? And... Um, uh, so if, in case you're wondering what this P corresponds to, basically P corresponds to this projection matrix that we're getting in the adaptive uh, sample, sampling. So now we show that it's possible to sample uh, rows of matrix AP um, in one pass of streaming and using space which depends on, uh, polynomially on D1 over epsilon and log n. And it's also easy to uh, see that uh, it's impossible to return the entire rows themselves as opposed to the index to the rows. And um, we can generalize it for the case where uh, we are sampling with probability proportional to the uh, norms as opposed to the squared norms of the rows. So using this result, uh, we can show that we can simulate adaptive sampling. Basically, we can show a process that samples subsets of the rows of size k, such that the total variation distance between the distribution over the subsets of size k of the rows that uh, is produced by our process and is produced by the adaptive sampling process is at most epsilon. And... Um, uh, so again, we can do it in one pass. Uh, the space usage of the algorithm is polynomial in D, K1 over epsilon and log n. And um, apart from the indices of these rows, we are able to report a noisy variant of the rows themselves as well. And again, it's uh, impossible to return uh, the, uh, the actual, uh, the, the exact rows uh, if we are only given sublinear space. Then we show applications of our um, adaptive sampling into these data summarization tasks that we talked about. So in particular, in the, again, in the row subset uh, selection problem, we are given uh, the matrix and a parameter k. We would like to pick k rows of the matrix that uh, minimizes uh, the total uh, square distances of all the remaining rows to the subspaces spanned by the rows that we have picked. And for this problem, we show that our algorithm uh, results in an order k plus 1 factorial approximate algorithm uh, for this problem and this is basically the first one pass turn stall streaming algorithm for the problem. 
And we can show similar results for subspace approximation. Basically, we can show an algorithm with approximation factor order k plus one factorial. This is the first relative error uh, algorithm in the turn solve stream that returns a subspace that is spanned by, su by a subset of the rows from the original matrix. And then we can uh, decrease the approximation factor down to one plus, uh, one plus epsilon uh, at the cost of uh, returning more rows, so a uh, subspace of uh, larger dimension. And um, again, for uh, projective clustering, we can uh, show similar results. We can get uh, the first one pass turn stall streaming algorithm with sublinear space. And finally, for volume maximization, uh, the goal is to pick uh, a subset of rows of size k such that um, the volume of uh, the parallel pipe that's spanned by those k points is maximized. So for this problem, we show how to get an algorithm with approximation factor alpha to the k times k factorial. And this is basically the first one pass turn install streaming algorithm for the problem. And the space usage of the algorithm is n d k squared over alpha squared. So we somewhat match this uh, upper bound with a lower bound showing that uh, any p pass uh, streaming algorithm in the turn start model, uh, if it achieves approximation factor of alpha to the k, it requires omega of n over k p alpha squared space. And basically this is tied up to a factor of k cube d in the space and k factorial in the approximation. And then we also show that uh, in the row arrival model, basically in the random order row arrival model, uh, any uh, algorithm that achieves approximation factor of c to the k for a fixed constant c would require linear space. And we some, uh, somewhat show a competitive upper bound. We show that uh, basically for an approximation factor c, which is a smaller than log n over k, um, we can get an algorithm in the row arrival uh, model, uh, which has approximation factor of c k to the k over two, and uh, which uses a space that is n to the order one over c times d. Okay, so for the remaining of the uh, session, uh, let me uh, tell you about the, uh, a little bit about the algorithms that we have. Uh, so let me remind you of our problem. So here we are given a matrix A that is coming in a stream. And after the stream finishes, we are given this post-processing matrix P. The goal is to sample one of the rows of the matrix AP with probability proportional to its squared norm. Okay. So the approach that we follow is uh, the approach of uh, L2 samplers for uh, vectors. So in this problem, we are not given a, a matrix, but we are given a vector in a streaming, uh, in a data stream. And the goal is to uh, sample one of the coordinates with probability proportional to its squared value. And uh, so here, what we need to do is that we need to generalize this algorithm from vectors to matrices. And second, we need to handle this post-processing matrix P. So for now, let's forget about the post-processing matrix P and let's see what is this general framework in the case of the uh, matrices. So uh, if we just adapt uh, their algorithm, this uh, here will be the algorithm for uh, the matrices. So uh, for each of the rows of the matrix A, we are going to pick one uh, value uh, uniformly at random from zero to one. Okay. And then we will allow bi to be a scaled variant of the row ai. That is, we let bi to be 1 over square root ti times row ai. And then it's easy to see that uh, the probability that the squared norm of bi is larger than the Frobenius norm of a is exactly equal uh, to the probability that we are looking for. It's exactly equal to uh, the square uh, uh, norm of uh, ai over the Frobenius norm of a. Um, therefore, we can look for the for this event. Basically, we can do the uh, do uh, do what we said and uh, check uh, find uh, an index i for which uh, the uh, the squared norm of p i is larger than the Frobenius norm of a. So uh, there are two issues with this approach. First of all, there could be multiple rows passing this threshold, and um, second is that we don't have. Uh, access to the values of bi and a, uh, the values of uh, squared norm of bi and the Frobenius norm of a exactly because we're in the streaming setting. 
So to handle the first issue, we use uh, the uh, technique that was used if, uh, uh, previously as well. So we increase the threshold and uh, so that this, uh, the probability that this event happens becomes lower and uh, we, we need to repeat this process to increase the success probability. And for the second issue, we are going to generalize existing algorithms uh, for count sketch and AMS in order to approximate the squared uh, norm of uh, the Rhodes BI and the Frobenius norm of A. So let me show it uh, only for the count sketch. So in the count sketch, uh, we have a stream uh, of updates to a vector f. And uh, the goal is to estimate the coordinates of this vector up to some uh, error. And we would like to generalize it uh, so that it works for rows of a, a, ma a matrix. So we are given a matrix and we would like to uh, approximate the norms of the rows of this matrix. So what count sketch does is that it has multiple hash functions and given a coordinate fi, it uh, um, hash it to several buckets and then uh, uh, it uh, adds or uh, subtracts the uh, coordinate fi from the content of that bucket based on a random plus minus one. And then the guarantee it gives us is that the space usage of the algorithm is only log n over epsilon squared. And, uh, uh, and the error is at most an additive uh, factor of epsilon times the total L2 norm of f. And now we do the same thing uh, for, uh, for rows of a matrix. So basically we receive the rows of the matrix and we are going to uh, again hash the rows of this matrix uh, into several buckets. But now in each uh, bucket, instead of only containing a scalar value, it's going to keep a vector of dimension D. Okay, and uh, therefore, um, so we do the same thing as before. We, based on the sign of the um, hash function, we are going to either uh, subtract it or add the, the vector bi to the uh, content of the bucket. And then uh, clearly the space usage of the algorithm increases by factor of d. And uh, we can show that the estimation error is uh, at most an additive uh, value of epsilon times the total for Binius norm of B. So using that, we can get our, our L2 and 2 sampler. Um, so we basically, we are going to estimate the values of uh, the norm of the rows, and we are going to estimate the Frobenius norm of uh, A using a generalized variance of count sketch and generalized variant of uh, AMS. And then we are going to check for, our, uh, for the events that we are looking for on the, uh, using the estimations, not the actual values. And then we can show that if we repeat this process enough number of times, uh, this will give us the sampler that we want. And now back to the post-processing matrix, we note that our um, component, the components that we are using, basically the generalized uh, count sketch and generalized um, AMS, both of them are uh, linear transformations. And therefore the whole uh, sketch that we are uh, keeping throughout the stream is just a linear transformation. Meaning that if you want to keep a sketch for the matrix AP, it's enough to keep the sketch only for the matrix A. And at the end of the stream, we can just multiply our sketch by this post-processing matrix P. And therefore very simply, we can adapt our algorithm to work with this post-processing matrix and get the result that we want. So basically now we can sample the rows of the matrix AP with roughly the probability that we want in one pass of streaming and use it, using a space that is polynomial in D, one over epsilon and log n. So now let's see how we can use our L2 and 2 sampler in order to get uh, our adaptive sampler. So basically here we're going to maintain K instances of our L2 and 2 samplers with a post-processing matrix. And now, uh, so we preserve all these K data, data structures throughout the stream. And at the end of the stream, we are going to use them one by one in order to get our uh, K samples. So for the, uh, to get our ith sample, we're going to use the ith data structure. And basically we'll, we will use it to to sample one of the rows uh, with probability pro uh, proportional to its uh, squared norm. And uh, basically once we sample one row, we are going to add it to the set of vectors that we have. And this will allow us to update the post-processing matrix P, is, which is just a projection matrix uh, away from what we already sampled. 
and we are going to feed it to the next iteration of the algorithm. So this all looks fine. It's uh, uh, the algorithm uh, is uh, working uh, well. Uh, so there's one issue here. The issue is that instead of having the actual rows, we have a noisy perturbation of the rows. And this itself is fine because we have the index uh, of the rows themselves. And we also have a noisy variant where the, the norm of the noise is uh, at most epsilon times the norm of uh, the projected uh, uh, vector, basically, the residual vector. And this is fine by itself. However, uh, the issue that it may cause is that it may drastically change the probability distribution in the subsequent rounds. And in particular, it may zero out some of the uh, probabilities that shouldn't have been zero and vice versa. So let's see this uh, by an example. So suppose that we have two vectors. A1 is this long uh, vector along the x-axis, so it's m and 0. And A2 is the small vector along y-axis, 0 and 1. And then uh, maybe in, uh, in most probably in the first round, we are going to sample a noisy variant of A1, uh, that is maybe R1. And um, although uh, we are, and uh, because the norm of A1 itself is very large, even a small multiplicative error um, perturbation will cause a lot of error. So now, if you take uh, the residual uh, vectors of A1 and A2 uh, with respect to the noisy vector uh, that we have picked, we see that the uh, residual of A1 is going to be even larger than the residual of A2. And in fact, we can change this uh, instance so that A1 will be sampled again and again. However, if instead of the noisy variance we had sampled A1 itself, then the probability of sampling A1 again would have been zero in the second round. So this shows that we cannot hope for a multiplicative bound on the probabilities. And in this work, what we do is that we show that uh, this picture is not probably going to happen. And what happens is more like this new picture. So in fact, uh, we show that not only the norm of the noise is small with respect to the um, norm of uh, the residual, but it's also small in all, uh, in any direction. And in particular, the norm of the noise in the direction orthogonal uh, to the vector that we wanted to pick is also small. Okay. To be more precise, we show that for any projection matrix Q, uh, the norm of the noise along that projection is smaller by an additional factor, which depends on the total decrease in the Frobenius norm of AP after we apply this projection. And to give you some intuition, uh, the count, count sketch is a linear transformation and the, uh, multiplying the, mat uh, the matrix by Q results in multiplying the error by Q. And therefore, because each of the vectors in this data structure are going to be multiplied by Q, the total noise goes down from epsilon times the Frobenius norm of AP down to epsilon times the Frobenius norm of APQ. And therefore, we can somehow bound the noise in any, any uh, direction that we, are, uh, that we are looking for. And this allows us to bound the additive error of uh, the sampling probabilities in the subsequent rounds. So this is the main uh, technical part of the paper, which I'm not uh, describing here, but I encourage you to read the paper. Okay, uh, so this will uh, give us the theorem that we want. We basically can show that uh, our uh, procedure, uh, procedure results uh, in a distribution th uh, that has a uh, total variation distance, which is up at most epsilon from the distribution output by the uh, uh, adaptive sampling. And uh, this is only uh, going to be one pass and uses a space that is polynomial in K, one over epsilon D and log N. So let me conclude my talk here. In this work, we show how we can do a, 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 a P and two sampler for P equal to one and two. And uh, in one pass of streaming using it, we can get our adaptive sampler. And we can use the adaptive sampler to get streaming algorithms uh, for uh, many data summarization tasks, including row subset selection, subspace approximation, projective clustering, and volume maximizations. For the volume maximiza maximization, we can show other uh, lower bounds and uh, upper bounds in the row arrival model as well. And let me conclude by a set of open problems. Uh, first of all, uh, it's very interesting to get tight uh, dependence on the parameters uh, for our sampler and adaptive sampler. And uh, second, uh, we would uh, like to see whether there are further applications of non-adaptive adaptive, -adaptive uh, sampling in um, um, 
for other uh, for for other uh, problems and finally to give you a more um, uh, uh, a more specific uh, question. We don't know if the volume maximization results in the row arrival model is tight. Basically, if we allow to have approximation factor k to the k, is it possible to get an algorithm that uh, does not have any dependence on the value of n? Um, so that concludes my talk and thank you for listening to it.